Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we do what? We continue the topic from the previous discussion. We were discussing semiconductor physics, right? So today we discuss another classification of devices, but this is basically the classification of semiconductor devices. And this is based on what? This is based on their purity level. So they are on the basis of purity, they are classified into two groups. Number one is intrinsic and number two is extrinsic. Intrinsic. So intrinsic semiconductor is that semiconductor which is pure. These are pure semiconductors. There you have uh, no other element present in the lattice. No other element present in the lattice structure. For example, you have a silicon lattice. Fine? Yes. Now, uh, this uh, we, we, we have already seen how the silicon, at, uh, silicon lattice is formed, how you can form the germanium lattice, how the gallium arsenide lattice is formed. So you don't have any other element in that structure. You only have silicon in the silicon lattice, four bonds each silicon atom will form four covalent bonds with its adjoining atoms so you don't have any other element no impurity so that is called what that is called intrinsic semiconductors fine yes free electrons in this case are only due to natural causes free electrons are only due to natural causes over here so in intrinsic you have the free electrons are only due to natural causes and what are those natural causes the natural causes are heat or light heat or light which means what that when you apply heat to the material or light in the form of a photon so what happens is the valence electron gains energy it gets out it gets into the conduction band and it's free to conduct so this is what is the intrinsic semiconductor they have a positive temperature coefficient or what yes positive no sorry negative temperature coefficient which we have already seen which means the increase of temperature is directly proportional to the number of free electrons available fine yes now this was the first the second is extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductor so over here these are not pure which means these are not consisting of only one element in the overall lattice we add an impurity impurity is added to what to the lattice structure so what happens uh, you add an impurity right so we add impurities to the intrinsic semiconductors to make them extrinsic and in what proportion so we add them in one part in 10 billion 10 million one part in 10 million one part in 10 million which means what that if you have 10 million atoms of the original intrinsic semiconductor so only one atom of the impurity has to be added fine yes now why why do we add them why do we add them adding an impurity will change the electrical property of what of the semiconductor and this is what we do adding an impurity changes the electrical properties of the semiconductor this is the main goal we have to vary the electrical properties 
what do we mean by that so from a relatively bad conductor we make it a relatively good conductor from being a good conductor we make it a relatively bad conductor by doing what by adding an impurity to the original intrinsic material and this process this process of making it uh, an extrinsic one of adding an impurity is called doping this process of adding an impurity to an intrinsic material is called doping okay now what is the impurity that we add what is the impurity so there are basically two types of impurities two types of impurities impurity could either be uh, 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 wait 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 yes impurities could be two types of uh, impurities number one is pentavalent pentavalent and the second is trivalent so pentavalent means what these are the atoms of group 5 of the periodic table whereas the trivalent these are the atoms of group 3 of the periodic table fine so over here pentavalent these would have 5 valence electrons whereas this group 3 element would have 3 valence electrons is that fine it is now what would happen when we add an impurity so depending on which impurity is added what would we have we would have two types we would have a hole we would have an electron so what would happen if the number of electrons is greater than the holes the concentration of electrons is greater than the holes it's an n type whereas if the hole concentration is greater it's a p type but what is a hole so let's first discuss that what is a hole so a hole is basically a vacancy of electron hole is what a vacancy of electron which means what that from here the electron is gone hole this is a vacancy of electron let's say we have this as the as the valence band the electron is present and we give we give it energy and it goes into the conduction band right so when you give it energy and it goes it leaves this place so it leaves be it leaves behind a vacancy and that vacancy that empty space from where the electron has left and it's gone into the conduction band that vacancy is called a hole fine so which means what when you give a initially initially what is the case when no energy is given so the valence band is full and the conduction band is empty when you give it energy so maybe some after some time you have the conduction band full the valence band empty but initially when one of them is gone so you say what that an electron hole pair is generated electron hole pair is generated why because an electron is gone to the conduction band and a, and a hole is present in the valence band so you say that an electron hole pair is generated now there is a term recombination there is a term recombination of electron in a hole so what is this thing it is not actually the bonding of the two not any physical or chemical combination but what happens in this term recombination is that the electron in the conduction band when it loses back the energy so when it loses the energy it comes back to its original place that is to the valence band and it has fulfilled the place it has filled the place which it has previously left empty so which means that the electron hole pair has recombined this is recombination so this is the basic theory of the whole right so now the extrinsic semiconductors are of two types number one is n type the second is p type the extrinsic semiconductor could be an n type semiconductor or a p type so what has the book discussed first p type so let's say p type 
or n type first n type first so the book has discussed n type first let's say we give the heading of an n type so in an n type semiconductor what do you do you take your structure your own lattice and you give it an impurity and what is the impurity added in the n type in the n type the impurity added is a group 5 element is added is a group 5 element the impurity added is pentavalent let's say uh, we we take a we take a group 5 element antimony right so the antimony has a uh, has a symbol sb right so if i take an antimony sb so it has 1 2 3 4 4 well uh, 5 valence electrons basically but let me show them four first so if you introduce it into the silicon structure so what will happen a silicon would come from this side and will have a bond a silicon would come from this side it would have a bond similarly it has three more and it will be bonded to silicon on each side a silicon would come from this side and it would have a bond and similarly over here yes so we introduced this antimony into this crystal structure of the silicon so what happened it attained the position like silicon does over here you had a silicon now you have a you have an antimony but what is the problem it has five valence electrons and you have only shown four of them bonded so you have one relatively free electron you have one relatively free electron that is the problem with it group 5 impurity extra electron donated so it is relatively free for construct for conduction so in the end type what do you do you have you have an extra electron and this extra electron is relatively loosely bound to the structure why because the others are bonded and this one is relatively I'm choosing the term relatively so this one is relatively free for conduction relatively free for conduction and one other point you could say if you say it like this that this impurity has relatively denoted an electron to the lattice can you not say it like this you can yes so you could also say that the that the impurity is a donor ion you could say that this is a donor ion plus why because this has donated an electron isn't it like this it is if potential difference is applied across the material then this free electron will be drifted and we will have electric current so the electron in this case is a charge carrier the electron is a charge carrier in this case is that fine let me see if we have some point in the book the electron is the charge carrier and and you and they will be in majority so the charge carrier that that is mainly responsible the mainly responsible charge carrier for current over here is electron so this is the majority charge carrier i don't know if the spelling is e or a in majority but doesn't matter it's not an english class so the electron is the majority charge carrier in this case fine Yes, so let's say we, we read out something from the book if we have. Uh, so,
this electron would have a, a little more energy this electron would have a little more energy as compared to the valence band this free electron would be somewhat in between the conduction band and relatively okay relatively which means it may be somewhere over here this is called the donor level okay this is called the donor energy level or what it's written in the book donor level yes appears in the forbidden gap with eg space significantly less than that of the intrinsic material those free electrons due to the added impurity sit in as have difficulty absorbing so what is the main thing the main thing is that that this this electron is already as it is in the valence band but it is relatively free so it is it has energy somewhere you have another level over here created this is called the donor level whereas why is this created or why is why are we showing it over here because this electron requires less energy than the electron in the absolute valence band to get into the conduction band this is what we are saying over here that this is in the donor level fine so i hope you have understood the entire material what did we do we just introduced an anti uh, we introduced up an impurity that is of a of a pentavalent group which means a group five which means it has five valence electrons and the thing is the base that we have is the silicon base so it has four valence electrons what do we have we have four bonds and then we have a we have a we have a relatively free electron so this relatively free electron is free for conduction purpose over here what do we have we have the electrons concentration uh, electrons concentration let me represent it by no or let's say ne no no wait no it is no no is greater than ho the whole concentration the concentration is what the number of charge carriers present per unit volume concentration is the number of charge carrier present per unit volume so over here the number of electrons present per unit volume would be greater than the holes present per unit volume fine yes next next is what next is your p type material the next is your p type material p type is again what it's again an extrinsic which means we have to add an impurity but this time the impurity would be a the impurity would be a a trivalent impurity and a trivalent impurity has what let's say a, a group 3 element boron which means it has three valence electrons so let's say we have a one we have another and and yes three isn't it three it is it is three it is three okay so we have three valence electrons so we have introduced it again into what into the silicon base into the silicon base so what do you do the silicon would occupy it from this side it will form a bond right one atom bonded similarly you have a silicon on this side one another side bonded silicon from here one side bonded third side bonded but but what about the fourth side what about the fourth side when a silicon comes from here from this side what where will it form a bond so it will not form a bond why because we have a vacancy of electron over here we have a vacancy of electron and this vacancy of electron is called a hole over here so this bond is not going to be formed why because in the p type material we have got a hole we have got a hole we have got a vacancy of electrons so it the n type impurity donated a, a, a what an electron over here this p type donated n a hole what can this hole do this is a this is a what 
this is a this is a vacancy of air which means any electron from any side could come and occupy this occupancy to complete this bond which means what will happen is, is that this is acting as an acceptor ion so which means that in the p type the impurity is acting as an acceptor ion you could say this is a positively charged ion because this has a vacancy of electron right so over here the current would be due to what would be due to the holes one if if this electron comes over here let's say to to fill this free this uh, vacancy so vacancy would be created over here yes so which means the vacancy has moved so we'll see the proper movement in the next video but over here you could see that the charge carrier is the hole isn't it like this it is holes are charge carriers in p type what happens is the holes are charge carriers and what charge carriers the thing the charge carrier that that is mainly responsible we call it to be the majority charge carrier in that case so over here the holes are in a lesser amount those would be due to the natural causes due to the application of heat etc absorbing heat from the surrounding etc so over here the holes would be your minority charge carriers and similarly your electrons over here in the p type the electrons would be the minority charge carriers is that fine till here it is and I believe I am done with it the diffused impurities are called acceptor atoms in the p type material and that should be it that should be it about it yes one thing else one thing else intrinsic and extrinsic we have a pure semiconductor as well and that pure is the thing which does not even have a crystal defect and what is that crystal defect so let's say if I have a crystal of this cubic shape just excuse me okay nothing let's say we have a crystal of this cubic shape right and electrons are present at each of its edges the, the atoms silicon let's say for instance whatever so this is a proper crystalline arrangement right so this sort of a crystal where each and every atom is identical for instance all of them are silicon and they have properly attained their positions so this is called a pure semiconductor a completely pure semiconductor whereas whereas let's say if and it, this is called that it does not have any crystal defect whereas if this is position a and this is position b and this leaves its position and comes from a to b the silicon atom so what do we have this one is called a crystal defect so when it has a crystal defect it is not called to be pure so this intrinsic this intrinsic is pure this intrinsic can have a can have a crystal defect okay this can have a crystal defect but the other condition must be satisfied that each and every atom of the crystal must be the same is that fine it is so this is what I needed to tell you and let's say if we draw it in a block let's say if we draw it in a block so in the p type what do we have in the n type let's say first so in the n type where should I draw it I will draw it over here so let's say I write this hole over here that the hole is your minority charge carrier in this case so if this is a this is your n type material so your n type material your impurity atom uh, ch ch uh, with the red color did what this acted as a donor ion so I show it with a donor plus sign each having its electron with it right so it has this electrons as the majority charge carriers as relatively free fine and similarly you have the holes in the minority isn't it like this it is 
similarly similarly if i show it on the other side if i show it for the for the p type so in the p type the the impurity is acting as an acceptor impurity so i can write it as a negative negative ion associated with a hole let's say i draw it with a black color the hole the negative ion is associated with a hole right and the electrons are in minority so you draw a, a certain number of electrons as well and that is it about it that is it about it now you have to remember that overall the structure has no charge overall the structure the lattice is electrically neutral why is it electrically neutral because the number of protons and the number of electrons are the same for both n type and p type overall the lattice is electrically neutral fine and let's say we, re we revise the p type as we did for the n type so what did we do we do we introduced a, a group 3 impurity a tetravalent impurity right so what do we have it would be occupied on all the sides by the silicon base so what do uh, what is done that uh, three bonds are formed and for one we have a vacancy and that vacancy can be fulfilled from the any direction so which means it can accept any electron from any direction so this we can say this is a relatively acceptor ion the electrons are in minority the holes would be in the majority and you have to remember these diagrams with yourself that is it about this video see in the next one very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you you have to remember many prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye